thank you all. Well, thank you very much, Congressman, um, in your busy schedule to come. Uh, this is a congressman who has led a lot of the most important fights for NASA, for science, and for space exploration. Uh, his service is phenomenal. Uh, I want to congratulate NASA for its 50th year anniversary. NASA has been a part of all of our lives for so much of the fantasy and the excitement of being an American and being a citizen of our great country. Um, I want to talk today about architectures and how systems will work over the next 50 years. I want to think that architectures of how we go about science and exploration and technology will be different. Right? They'll have to think about it in a different way. Um, I think that the internet will show a, a new approach for us, how we can actually build these systems. Those of you in the audience are people who actually are in charge of how the system will evolve over the next 50 years. Now is the time to think about how to design it so that we have a tremendous next 50 years. The next set of missions that the President and others have articulated, Mars and so forth and so on, will span many generations, just as the Internet has. And I want to take you through some of my, my observations on that. I also want to take a minute and congratulate the, the museum. Uh, Shelby and the team here are in the process of getting organized, launching this formally later this spring. Uh, this is a phenomenal accomplishment by all the people involved in this. And it's a strong testament to America, to the principles for which the company, the country, country has been founded, um, and all the things that we care about. And I'm very, very proud to have been invited to actually participate in this. I think the, one of the first major public events here. So let's talk a little bit about NASA. And what I'm going to do is uh, have Robin uh, get started, Robin Ziegler get started. Uh, we're going to do a few demos here to get a sense of what is possible now with some of the things that NASA has been doing. As a pilot, I'm, I'm very actually grateful for everything that NASA has done. And I think one of the things that people always forget is how much impact NASA has had on things other than space. Um, digital fly-by-wire systems, wind shear and icing, perfect good opportunity today to take advantage of these new systems built by NASA. Jet engine combustors, engine, no engine nozzle chevrons, all of these interesting parts of the technology that you all simply consume as, you know, as consumers. You don't even notice it. Um, but what I think, when I think about NASA and I think about Google, I think of both as being in the business of making things that were amazing commonplace. Right? You look at the history of aviation, which I know something about, people were terrified with this sort of weather before NASA came along. It was actually a serious, life-threatening problem. And now we can deal with it. That's an amazing achievement. It happens every day. And it's going to continue, given the leadership of NASA and the mission of NASA and the things that NASA is trying to do. When I think about Google, we try to do the same thing. We try to do things that are amazing, things which, which were amazingly impossible 10 years ago are now routine. Um, I was trying to think about aha moments. I thought, well, what, is the, what is the most interesting query that I, can, that I can give? And I thought, how long will I live? Seems like the most important question you could ask Google. And since we use Google for everything, I asked Google. And the answer is, there's an age calculator. I typed in all the parameters, and it came up 67. Bad answer. <laughs> bad answer, bad answer. Reject that answer. OK, so I reprogrammed the age calculator a little bit, and I came up to 86. Much better answer. I stopped. I moved to other searches. Uh, that's an aha moment. I know how long I'm going to live. And the answer is, it's 84, not 67, because Google told me. Now. Robin, let's, let's start. This is uh, the crookedest street in the world in San Francisco. And you're looking at it uh, with a product called Google Street View. We started off with a view of the Earth, as you saw as we zoomed down. And you notice you see the, the folks and the cars. You have street signs and so forth. Is that Alcatraz in the distance there? Uh, maybe you could sort of go. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's a tourist destination now. Don't worry. And here you are, and you're, you're just on Google wandering around. Uh, what's interesting about this is look at the human scale of this experience, this exploration. Seems kind of routine, right? This is, by the way, phenomenal technology to do this before we, before we get too ahead of it. Let's, let's keep going. Uh, 
when we go to um, the same thing in Google Earth, the first thing was called Street View. In Google Earth, we can see everything there is around. And the first image that you saw was the same street in Google Earth. And now we're visiting, looks like, Washington, D.C. Um, and of course, here's the Capitol, which is right, right sort of next door. Now, we can wander around and so forth. Now, the pictures here include these 3D models of all the buildings. And the shapes that you're seeing and the contours were, in fact, calculated in 11 days in missions in the shuttle in 2000. For completely unrelated reasons, they decided to do a topography of the Earth. And they happened to, by virtue of their public mission, make it available to everyone. So we just sort of took it and use it. And now when you use Google Earth, you're really following the data that the shuttle mission calculated. Keep going. Now, when you, when you think about Washington, um, there's a lot of discussions, for example, about, um, let's see what we're going to do next here. We're, yes, we're, uh, it turns out that there is a, uh, a lot of debate about global warming. And this is a, uh, what is the, how many meters? Five meters, 15 feet. And uh, so the good news is the capital is going to be preserved. <laughs> okay. I'm a little worried about the Smithsonian's, and I want you all to look at the NASA headquarters. <laughs> it's a little bit of a problem. I think it has an underground parking garage. You're in big trouble. Uh, not to make a point about global warming or any of those things or sea level change, but there is an article yesterday that says that there is a possibility of this scenario occurring by the year 2100. Now, why is it important we show this to you now? Because this is an example of the kind of visualization that you can do by taking this platform that represents Google Earth and then showing what could happen. Obviously, we don't want that to happen. Keep going. Um, what's interesting about all of this, and we're going to do, what are we going to do next year? Yeah, let's take a look. This is another example of NASA. NASA, um, I think this was Langley, uh, gave us some climate models. And the climate models sh happened to show the path of Katrina. And so we've now overlaid the images that we got from, uh, from you all, essentially. And you can see, as you see the cloud moving, it has uh, information about velocity and position and so forth and so on. Uh, th these models were used real time in order to understand what was going on. And of course, you can see the velocity and that kind of thing. Many, many, many more people participated in understanding the phenomena and obviously also the aftermath. We won't show you now, but there's a large amount of imagery that was done to help rescue missions and so forth, again, overlaid on top of this work, again, in conjunction with NASA. Let's move to our next one. Now, when I, uh, when I think about the Earth, I also like to think about uh, what are the things that I'd like to do, and I've always wanted to climb Mount Everest. Now, if you're looking at me, this is clearly not going to happen. So what we decided to do is, I was just sitting in my office one day, and I thought, well, let me just climb Mount Everest on Google Earth. <laughs> so here we are, and we sort of wander up, and you can see the South Call, and so forth and so on, and this is the vision, and I've achieved my objective. <laughs> well, have I? Yeah, actually I have. I have a sense of it. I have a sense of what it's like to be at the highest peak of Earth. Again, I can participate in this new and interesting way. Um, and by the way, it's really cold. <laughs> okay. um, if, I, um, if I then look at, let's see where we're going next. Um, when, I, when I think about what else I could do, I was talking about aviation. Uh, we have a person who is a blogger who covers Google Earth who decided to build a model, a flight simulator. And he took a, a publicly available uh, Swiss uh, fighter pilot video of a, of a Swiss uh, Air Force pilot wandering around the Alps. You see on one side